thoughtless state of mind and you know and that's usually when I end up sending and I find myself at the top that's kind of the glory in it as well you fight 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 and then you know eventually do it and it means more than if you just like do it really quickly I don't let things stop me I get more motivated if someone tells me or something or the universe tells me I can't do something you know I'm one of those people that are gonna fight back and be like, oh, well, yeah, I can, watch me. This is how I feel, this is what I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna like be someone that I'm not. You just have to take the bad in with the good and sometimes you have setbacks and have to just mentally prepare yourself for that as best as possible. I don't wanna win on luck. I want to win because I was the best climber version of myself that day. Today is Saturday, December 10th, and it's about 10 a.m. and we're ready to go climbing. The goal every day is just to have fun and do your thing and um, hopefully you get a little lucky and maybe you can send something. We've been out here for like a week and a day now. We've had four or five climbing days. This will be like the fifth or something and um, I sent a V12 which was like really long, about like 30 moves, which is really cool. It's a, it's a stout V12 which I was psyched on. Uh. Yeah. Maybe I need to start sport climbing because I just project that for a few days. And I feel pretty good. I'm getting there and fitness is getting, you know, pretty good. And next weekend we go to a competition, leave Waco for a week to go to uh, one of the USA Climbing National Cup Series competitions. And so hopefully this is helping. <laughs> Basically for like the next two hours, kind of just relaxing, getting in the good mental spot or place so I can um, give some good burns on House of Doom, my project. But right now, kind of supporting friends, hanging out, keep on warming up a little bit, and kind of just chill. It's like the, the calm before the storm, kind of. Okay, you got it. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go up to the right rock, too, if you want. That's off. Oh, it is. Like, don't go there. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell you it was there, but you got it. Come on. Come yeah, on, hold it, hold it, hold it. Nice. Come on. That's right, it. Come on, keep breathing. Nice. nice and sweet. Good job. My mom, Kim, she got us into climbing about a year after she's already been climbing. And I was about 13 years old when she first took me and my siblings to the climbing gym. And I remember my first time going to the climbing gym, there was this like slab wall, like literally you could walk up it with no hands. Well, Alex first tried to get on the wall and she was scared to death, rope climbing. And she went halfway up like a 5'8". And then Casey's like, oh, I can do this. And she just beamed up there. I was like, oh man, my little sister did it. And I'm so competitive that I could not allow her to do something that I couldn't do. She said to me, she goes, Casey's not gonna beat me again. So that was it. And ever since then, she's, she knew that she wanted to be better. I mean, if not better than her sister, just she wanted to be better in general. I remember Kyle, the coach for Team Texas, really wanted my little sister on the team. She was like, uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I just kind of do this for fun. And I'm like, take me, take me. And I remember him telling me I was like too old to mold into a perfect climber. So in his mind, he's like, oh, yeah, like you're not very good right now because you just started and you're a lot older. I'm like, well, like I'm more psyched than everyone else. I remember him sitting down talking with me and yeah, he allowed me on the team and that was that. She goes, I am going to be the best boulder in the world one day. I mean, in, like clear as day, like she knew it, so it was, it was pretty interesting. She, she knew what she wanted when she was about 13, 14 years old. When I was about 14 or 15, I actually entered my first pro comp I ever did. I don't even remember the name of it, but I remember it was on the East Coast, and I was like a V5 climber or something, and I don't even remember why I wanted to go. I didn't do very well. I was like 
15th or something. And I remember being like really happy with that and stoked. I mean, it just totally inspired her. She loved it. She was going to get Angie Payne and Lisa Rands. And I remember that when she saw um, Angie Payne and Chris Sharma, she's like, oh my God, I want to be like them someday. But then I didn't do another pro comp until I was about 16. And it was ABS Nationals. I remember it was at the spot. I remember the gym was really crowded. Um, I remember, I think it was Alex going against Alex Johnson, which actually for years, that's what it was. They, the two were always competing against each other. I made finals in ninth place. So I was ninth going into finals. And I remember having this like, like I talked to myself in the shower that night. You know, I needed to change something mentally before finals. And it worked. I remember like having fun the whole time. Like I didn't, I honestly didn't care how I did. And I remember one of the coaches, I think it was Claudio, he came up to me like around the end of finals, like, I don't know for sure, but I think you won. So we weren't sure which Alex won, we just knew one of them did. I saw on the thing, like the sheet that I won, and I was like still in disbelief. I'm like, I'm not gonna like even believe that until they call me up on like that first place podium. I think you have like one of those moments that will stand above any other moment in like your career, and that was the one. It's weird right now, like I feel, I never, I've learned not to get too like wrapped up mentally in your warm up process just because, I mean, if I was completely like say it out loud and honest, like I don't feel perfect right now, but I mean, I don't like to think about it. I try to put it out of my head as much as possible. From many years of climbing, my experiences are, I've warmed up and felt amazing and then just had a crap climbing day. And then I've also had the opposite a lot where you warm up, you're sluggish, you're like, ugh, I don't feel very good. And then you end up sending. So it's one of those things I try not to think about or like to think about and just be in the moment more. Part of my lunch, I have Honey, chocolate, peanut butter, banana. That's for when I'm feeling kind of drained and worked from my project. Usually after I eat this, there's not much sending going on. It's like at the end of the session when I need to pick me up. Got some turkey, avocado, tomatoes, and hummus. It's green hummus. But uh, yeah, I try to eat a little healthier during the day. I'm not gluten-free or dairy-free or any of these things. I'm like just gluten and dairy and whatever, less. So, everything in moderation. Yeah. All right, so this is House of Doom. Welcome really? to one of my projects, of many. Um, starts here in the Swaco, the jug. And you kind of get your feet, there's a few different ways. What you know, here's your cup of tea. You reach right hand all the way up to this one. And then you get a toe hook by your hand. You can fall into something if you want, but basically you have to come left hand here. Pinch with your thumbs in the roof. And then left foot goes there. Slide the right toe hook to like here. Probably should take that. It's down there. Kind of just falls into place. And then you have this hard foot cut where you cut your feet and bring your right foot to this little one. And then the move I haven't quite done yet was linking to this one. And this is actually a pretty decent hole. It's like one of the better ones on the wall. And then you get a weird little drop knee flip. Get your feet really close. And then another little red point crux is you have to get to this third knob. So you have one, two, three. And then you shouldn't fall after that. You can fall, I guess, going to the next one. Like you have to cut your feet, bring left foot, and go to like a little finger bucket. And if you fall after that, it's gonna suck. So, we will see. And that's how to do.
I've had for like fucking three, four months. It doesn't go away. So 2008, I competed in my first World Cup in uh, Vail, Colorado. And I made finals. I think I came sixth or fifth place. I did pretty poor actually in finals. So going into 2009, for my second World Cup I've ever, I ever competed in, I kind of knew a little bit what it was about. All right, it's your people. Funny thing about that comp is I got really sick the two, like three weeks before the comp and I was on antibiotics and I couldn't climb a single day like two weeks before the competition. And I lived in Boulder and so Vail is not very far. If it wasn't in Vail, I probably wouldn't have gone to it. I'm like, well, I'll go anyways, just see what happens. It's really close to home. I squeezed into finals in sixth place and so then they take top six. So I was last going into finals uh, in last place and so I was first on every climb and I just, kept on doing them. I flashed the first, I was psyched, uh, flashed the second, and I just like had this free moment again. Since I wasn't training before the competition and I didn't have expectations, and on the fourth climb, the last one in finals, it was my style like to a T. I, it was all these overhung wall, all these pinches, jumps, pretty short, and a jump to the last hold, and I flashed it. So I ended up winning, which was amazing because I had very little expectations going into that competition. Yeah, and that's the only World Cup I've won so far. Um, maybe I just need to get sick before every competition, I don't know. But finding that moment for competitions in the future will, you know, I definitely look back to that moment to try to get back in that mental state. I don't feel any better. Yeah, I hope that I'm getting... Maybe I'll just hide for I'm just hoping one day I'll just wake up and feel like I'm getting stronger. Mm. Keep trying. Yeah. Oh my god! Huh. I just want to progress a little bit. Rest for five minutes. When I was 21, I'm 2021, I moved to Europe for a few years. I lived in England for two years. I lived in Innsbruck for about six months, Innsbruck, Austria. And that kind of propelled me into the, doing the World Cup circuit. I trained really hard in the beginning of the year for the World Cups. I was under the World Cup season. And then I started doing really bad in them. I was stronger than I ever was. And I was kind of just doing shit. I had this mental block just mess it up completely. And I've only won one World Cup. And that was like the second one I ever entered. And I had this goal where I wanted to do that and I wanted to win overall the season and for the World Cups. And I've come third so many times. And it was just like, it's so taxing. Like I just, I don't know why I was messing up all the time. So in 2014, I said, when I got to Vail, it was like halfway through the season. If I did pour, I wasn't going to finish out the season. I did very poorly for myself. I didn't make finals. I just climbed outside and that's it. Now with all the expectations, it's hard to get to a place where it's just fun and careless. That's when I started climbing outside a lot more. You don't have to do the boulder palm in five minutes. I think she does feel like she's more at peace outside. It, she does it for herself. When she's inside, I think she does it for everybody else, plus herself. My boyfriend, Joel Zare, and I went to Rocky Mountain National Park, and we went there like maybe five, six days a week. I climbed my first V13, and I climbed my second V13, and then I climbed a V14, and then my second V14, and I didn't have expectations of doing that either. I just was just having fun. I was just carefree. Like, I didn't care what I did. And the results were amazing. My mom was like, oh, go to, let's go to the World Championships in Munich. And I remember being on the phone crying to her. And I was like, I don't want to go. 
Uh, I was like, I haven't been climbing inside. I've been climbing amazingly outside. I'm having fun. I don't have the money. She called me back up. She's like, well, I'll pay for it. We're gonna take a vacation. For any parent that has a kid that wants to, you know, win the gold or have, you know, to be the best at their sport, it's worth it for any of us. We went and like I had no expectations that I haven't been training for it. And now Alex Puccio, dream start from the Colorado climber. Every round that I, you know, I went to the next round, I went to the next round, I was like, oh, I, I'm advancing, this is awesome, I'm just having fun, like, I'm falling on a boulder fall, I'm not doing it, and I'm like, smiling. I made finals, and I was like, second by one fall. Like, if I had one fall less, I would've been first. I was so happy with that, because like, I didn't expect to make finals. It was great, it was something that she's wanted for a long time. I know, I know she wanted the gold, but I think that just kept her motivated to say, okay, I'm there. I could do this. Yes. Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Oh, she she gets gets away. I think that was what clicked for me of being like, okay, well, I know I'm strong enough to win every comp that I do, and it's not a matter of I need to get stronger, it's a matter of my mental game needs to get better. Yeah! Alex the marker! Wow! One hand on the world title! From now on, I've decided I'm gonna climb mostly outside and train inside once in a while and see what happens. You just have to be positive. You have to think of, you know, all the good things and where it's gonna take you and you just have to be more, you know, uh, optimistic and I don't let things stop me. If someone tells me or something or the universe tells me I can't do something, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that are gonna fight back and be like, oh, well, yeah, I can, watch me. I've always been like that with everything in life. You know, if it's competitive or not, rock climbing or not. If someone says no, I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna show you. I remember laying on the ground thinking, my career's over. I'm done. I'm, I'm never gonna come back. I'm gonna overcome this. You know, I'm gonna do whatever I can and train as hard as I can without this leg. And that's exactly what I did. You just have to just go with them. It's not a straight line and anything can happen, but it makes me more determined in wanting to fight harder and try harder.